pistols in the air. What's up? Hello. Welcome. Hello. Welcome to place hey. of assembly. Hi. Sorry, I'm talking over everybody. Um, how is everybody doing? Good. It's great. <laughs> right. Excellent. Excellent. So, um, today's episode, uh, Poland, third in a three-part series on art organizing and culture in Eastern Europe. Um, we've got people here from Katowice, Dansk. Gdansk and um, Krakow. Am I, I hope I'm saying everything like approximately correctly, but you guys will correct me as we go. Um, I'm going to dive right in and to the place of assembly question, and then you guys can introduce yourselves. But um, so the the, uh, the place of assembly question is, what is, and we can all I'll pick people to go in whatever order, but uh, what what is the most intense or ecstatic or crazy event that you've ever been a part of where you had some type of leadership role, like not you were just there as a guest, like you were doing something there that you were responsible for. Uh, Cyprian, why don't we start with you? Uh, sure, hi, uh, my name is Cyprian. I'm from Krakow, Poland. Uh, yeah, I've, I'm a promo promoter of shows. I've been, I've been doing shows for like last 13 years. Uh, usually I'm, I'm running a venue, sometimes in between those venues I just promote shows in, in the friendly places that I know. Uh, sometimes I also do shows like in other parts of Poland, uh, especially when it helps the bands. When they come, it's usually good to put like two or three, three shows together, so sometimes I get involved in those situations. Uh, I think, is that enough of an introduction or should I? Perfect. Should I, because I, not, you asked the question and I'm asking, uh, I'm thinking about the question. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, do the question. <laughs> like trying to introduce myself. Uh, whoa. Uh, it's intense question. I, I must answer, uh, like, you mean the event that I was involved in? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And was most, yeah. I gotta go with like uh, with 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 the festival that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Grinzo, and it's 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 really difficult for me uh, to 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 point at like one specific concert if if that what you meant. But I like think... especially the, uh, at the because at, under the pandemic I was I was I was doing. 10th online edition of, of this event that's usually happening uh, late May, early June. It's changed like uh, shapes and size, uh, shapes like, uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, in shapes, I mean, uh, how, 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 how did it actually look in terms of dates? Uh, it used to be like one huge weekend of like uh, many bands and many venues at the same time. Gradually, it's it's it it moved into a direction of like a month of mu of, of of concerts happening in Krakow uh, to to bring like I I mostly because I I always wanted to bring the bands that I wanted to 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 show to the people and to 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 see live myself as well uh, the bands that I wanted to bring the most I, with my like circumstances I couldn't like bring them all in this certain point. So I moved into a direction of doing like two or three bigger uh, like weekends uh, uh, and sometimes even some, some concerts that were happening outside of that. Uh, and definitely my like my like greatest moments were uh, at, at this festival that I'm doing, especially like, no, actually I can't judge it, but like the, the early editions were amazing. Uh, in terms, I, I, I didn't exactly know uh, what I was doing. They were, I, by, by strange chance, they were actually bigger <laughs> in terms of they were just like one weekend and like 30, 40, sometimes 50 bands. Uh, so a lot of organizing. So I was running a lot and just catching the moments of the concerts. Mm -hmm. uh, but and sometimes, sometimes st staying for longer, see, seeing it all. But like coordinating all the time, uh, but I, but I had some some amazing like ama amazing moments moments then, 
but maybe no i'm actually gonna say like when it's when it moved into the direction wh which it is uh, wh how it's shaped now when i had actually had the chance to uh, like focus on those concerts enjoy them and actually uh, be, be, like organize the a, a concert for my favorite band in the whole world or one of one of my favorite bands in the whole world, which is and who, be, and, and be and be 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 like standing then there there were like actually by ex by strange chance there were many, so ah. I can't I can't I can't at least four or five. So like this moment when you're when you when you're you know you know done organizing, and you're standing underneath this fucking amazing stage. It's May. It's hot outside. Well, sometimes raining. Never mind. Uh, but you're among those people and you're, you know, you've got at this back of your head, you've got this feeling that you're okay. At this point, you've, you're, you've, you're done organizing. Uh, you're just enjoying the concert with like your friends and like people who came to the, to the show. So they're also, they also always my friends. And then I can't, I, I can't, I can't point at any, any, any better situation at doing what I'm doing. But I, when, when you've got this feeling that now it's happening, now it's, you know, it's done in a sense, mm -hmm. and now you enjoy, really enjoy the music, and it's like one of your favorite bands in the whole world. Maybe not like a huge band in Poland, but still, people came. It's an amazing, you know, concert situation. You feel it. Yeah, you, you you like leave it with the with the with the guys, uh, girls who are playing on stage, but you also like enjoy the people who are standing under, underneath of it. And yeah, I had I had I had some some. Amaz amazing and crazy moments. Usually after the concert or even during the concert, I let myself loose and then it ends in different funny, st different Krakow stories. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know how that funny, part ends. Funny, funny stories, but yeah, but, but uh, it's because I'm, you know, enjoying it so much that I like jump into the situation. Then I'm, I can't be like organizing anymore. Like in the strict sense, I just I just go. You're, you're one so, of the so, so I, I hope the I hope there is at jumping into the situation. I said you're one of the best there is at jumping into the situation. <laughs> uh, not sure, but like this is this this is yeah this is how I do. So I hope I hope this this answers your question. I'm not I'm not gonna name name bands. There there were there were several there were several. So yeah. So I had to make a list but like but i'm not lying my favorite music in the whole wide world playing you know krakow which is not an obvious situation and then you're in this in this in this in this thing you know 100 <laughs> mm -hmm, all mm -hmm. right christoph i can actually add something to what Cyprian said it's like he's one of a few promoters that i know that you can meet him in the front of a crowd the mosh pit or something like this like <laughs> looking on the people like getting crazy by the stage and like this guy should probably he's running that show right <laughs> <laughs> flying all over the you know the room um uh my name is Christoph uh Krzysztof in Pol uh, polish or chris um i'm from gdansk uh i live in gdansk um now um i'm most of the most of uh, of of, uh, of of my time working with uh, with the music and culture, I uh, I was a booker and music curator working with festivals, institutions, and venues. Now I'm mostly working as a manager and agent of artists, and also as a mus music supervisor for the movies and and video games. Um, and I was like thinking about what would be like intense moments for me, and like. I think there are like the two main groups. One is emotional. And I, I'm really lucky that I've done many really unique artists, very radical artists. And like, I remember doing like that kind of things when the when people are really trying to reach some boundaries. And like, I remember doing on the uh, gig of like, uh, Dean Blunt was a part of the festival that I was a part from. And he played so loud that color alarms just opened through whole, like on the whole street next to the venue. And like police came and didn't know why suddenly whole street is like ringing. That was because of a sub base of the blunt. 
Um, and that kind of things are always, you know, getting into my mind when something is like going outside of a venue, like, like the, the, the gates are so loud or the artist would like to use more space than usually. Mm, that's always stick to my mind. And all the like emotional moments I remember doing gig of Keiji Haino, mm, legendary Japanese uh, avant-garde artist. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he stayed a few days in Wrocław on avant-art festival that, he, that I used to do. And like, for example, he, uh, on one moment, he said, you know, I didn't plan that, but I think I would play a solo show on my wooden gongs that I never played. And I took them from the Tokyo. And like that kind of moment when I can see that somebody is doing something for the first time, like doing something really special. It's always like, you know, very kind of uh, shocking in a great way. Mm -hmm. and, and so, so, so like emotionals, things could be like really delicate and subtle um, and that's sticking to my mind. But of course the gigs where the things are, you know, are totally uh, out of control and, you know, things are just happening. Mm -hmm. Got you. Um, that sounds amazing with KG Haino and the car alarms. Um, okay, uh, Wukash, uh, how about you? Uh, Do you have something in mind? Uh, <laughs> what? What I have in mind, uh, I don't know. I always uh, have a huge, uh, you know, I don't know, um, uh, huge uh, uh, experience when I uh, making a concert in the gallery. So it was not uh, only, um, uh, you know, exhibitions, but also concerts. So it was very, uh, very, very funny moments when uh, we uh, provided uh, such a space where, uh, you know, neighbors are under uh, and over us. And we made uh, such a gigs, <laughs> maybe uh, sometimes all day because we are part of the uh, Tauron New Music Festival. And one of, the one of the scenes are in the gallery. So from the middle of the day till evening, we make, uh, a, uh, you know, avant-garde and uh, experimental electronic concerts very, very loud. So people don't know uh, what, what, uh, you know what's happening. <laughs> so it was very, very uh, extremely uh, emotional and and very funny moments. But for the for the main, my name is Vukas Dziedzic. So I'm running a contemporary art gallery called Shara. So which means gray, gray gallery. And uh, it was established in, in 202. So it's a lot of time in small town called Cieszyn. It is on the border uh, between Polish and Czech Republic. The city was, is divided uh, between, uh, you know, two, two countries. So it, it is very, very, very small uh, city, but it uh, have a university college there. So it was many people who were involved in our activity from the beginning. So, uh, it was, uh, I don't know, 12 years. After 12 years, we were moved to Katowice, the bigger city in the Silesia region. Uh, we decided it, to move to Katowice because of political situation and cut off our funds and, and very, very strange, uh, you know, pushing uh, uh, political pushing to, to, to our activities and our uh, what, what are what we were doing there so uh, mainly we make uh, exhibitions we make concert uh, also edu educational uh, activities uh, a lot of and uh, we uh, so what are we doing <laughs> Uh, we, now we're representing artists also, so we uh, manage uh, uh, and trying to uh, uh, change the model of the gallery from the very, very independent space to 
more like hybrid, hybrid uh, uh, gallery and trying to involve in the art market because of, uh, um, you know, we, we want to help our artists to, uh, to live, to make money because uh, of a uh, strange uh, situation on the, uh, our cultural, uh, our cultural situation is very strange. So we want to help uh, people to, to make their careers and know their stuff uh, in the, um, you know, straight way. So you understand. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So uh, my my first question is a follow up for you. You say that your cultural situation is very strange. So tell tell me what you mean by that. Uh, uh, it is a uh, it's always political situation and political space. Uh, we uh, when we moved from from Cheshire, the uh, you know the right wing party was uh, in, the, uh, in the stir of, 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 of the city. So uh, before that, uh, that was uh, uh, mainly in all Poland, uh, the, the change uh, was in all Poland. First, we, uh, we touched it in, in the city because uh, the mayor of the city was from, from you know, from the right wing party, peace party, and and it's uh, changed the optics of uh, uh, um, you know talking to people involved in culture, also in uh, uh, put the money for the very different uh, uh, activities and all the you know social organization, NGOs and etc. was making a good job in the city was uh, cut off from the funds. So it was very, very rough, uh, rough and, and hard. And, and uh, so, and now we have it on all Poland. The institutions where, uh, institutions where we cooperate in, uh, in Katowice, they, are, they were change uh, directors of the Museum Silesia. We, uh, we're doing together uh, residences for artists and uh, together exhibitions. And now they, they are politically uh, corrected <laughs> and by the, uh, you know, the head of the, uh, of this Silesia region. So it changed uh, the politi political situation very, um, it's changed our, you know, uh, possibilities to, mm -hmm. to make culture. And that's why we, we're trying to a little bit change the model to, to do what we want to do still mm -hmm. without uh, this, uh, you know, funds from city or, or, or country or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got you. Now, uh, Cyprian and Christoph, uh, are, uh, is what Wukash is saying, is this also uh, informing your experience? Mm, not like, in a way, I'm lucky uh, in a way that the city diet that I'm living in, it's actually a uh, metropolia consisting from like three different cities. Um, but all these three cities are pretty... Uh, like open and they they are like against um, kind of uh, mentality that our government especially now have. So they are like openly speaking against right wing nationalism, xenophobic, and all that kind of things. Mm -hmm. And so, like luckily, luckily for me, it doesn't change so much because this city is trying to. Um, give a chance to the people who didn't have uh, support from the government or from the Ministry of Culture, um, they can gather the kind of smaller but, but still support from the local, um, from, the, from, from the cities and, and town halls. Uh, but of course, there are some things uh, like main inst culture institutions, like for example, in Gdansk, there is a huge museum of Second World War, which is like 
correctly placed because Second World War started in Gdańsk. And at the beginning, that was very open-minded uh, institution, which is like um, trying to sh show whole kind of uh, story about war from the civilians and like minorities and like whole spectrum and whole view. Now it's like, it was overtake by the, by the people from the government and they like, this, this museum about war is pro-war. It's like the, it's, it's, it's like that kind of nationalism mm. mythology that dying for your own country is something mm. humble. And, mm. and, and so even here, when we have a really like different kind of open-minded local authorities, um, mm. there are some institutions that they were overtaken or there are some institutions that, you know, government and like a, Warsaw, like it's the main institutions in Warsaw, central institutions about culture trying to overtake. Um, so, so, so it's like, I, can, I think you can see that kind of things everywhere in Poland. Some mm. cities are trying to be against and fighting with it. Some, you know, are more uh, like cooperating or, you know, like mayors are from right wing, you know, uh, part of a political scene and they are even pushing further that kind of changes so 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 that's true from my point of view and, and so uh Wukash, that in katowice it's more there you don't have that type of resistance that um christoph is describing about in gdansk where there the city is the city is not against the government but rather is for the agenda of the right-wing government more so in katowice than in gdansk I, I think yes, <laughs> but it's not only uh, you know uh, a city because it also the uh, the the people who manage uh, all region Silesia region they are from the uh, right side of the <laughs> you know uh, political uh, wing, so they are making a very very bad uh, you know things in culture now in in Silesia region so it's a it's a sad situation but we trying to uh, you know uh, making something differently because of that so mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah and, it's and the, it's it's uh, very uh, I don't know very. It's the different uh, situation than in Gdańsk or, 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 or yeah, Krakow. Um, and is it primarily is it primarily making it difficult financially, or is there another aspect to what has made things difficult that's coming, you know, out of this governmental situation? Uh, uh, corporations. So uh, it it was ended. So it was like. Uh, when we are uh, making together a project with uh, Silesia Museum, when it, uh, when it was a uh, very uh, um, open-minded uh, director who wants to uh, cooperate with, with other, uh, even uh, uh, more, more smaller places, venues, galleries, to make uh, together a, a cultural program because they are very big uh, institution with, with a very big budget and they try to cooperate with, with other places to making together very uh, good, uh, you know, um, situations and, and, and cultural uh, events and, and et cetera. Uh, so it's a very big messy now and it's changed uh, a lot not only with uh, involved with uh, with the money with the funds it mm. was that the co the corporations was ended because we uh, we don't uh, have any anyone to speak in in this institution now so it's uh, it's a sad mm. understood um, all right cyprian and and for you in krakow how how is this experience affecting your work uh, with me, unfortunately, and fortunately, I was I was actually never that much dependent on like on like grant money, mm -hmm. uh, because like, and especially in Poland, uh, you, you if you want to do uh, what you want to do, like 
find fi find an in interesting music, uh, not necessarily necessarily very popular or like widely you know recognized around here. Uh, it's quite hard to, uh, to to convince people and to find this money. Uh, not that I haven't tried because I've tried a lot. Uh, so. Unfortunately, unfortunately, on one side, uh, be beside like some situations for the for the festival, of course, I had some uh, I had some basic funding, not not enough to make it happen, but like to to help it happen. I'd like to continue what the guys were saying that that also uh, like ended with with peace with this right wing government mm -hmm. <laughs> because like the. Uh, yeah, the, uh, 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 the only place I used to get any money for the festival from was uh, this government of the Voyevodship of this of this like Krakow region, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, and unfortunately, with the change in the because the, they they also won the the local elections here, uh, so with that they changed the whole like uh, not that it was perfect. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that. Uh, but like they change, they they change the whole like uh, situation in terms that now people who are not connected to them and not doing like things connected to like in a broad sense like nationalism or like uh, uh, institutions that are directly connected to like Catholic Church. We gotta we, we gotta put, put things straight because the, it's it's obvious because when you look at the list of like institutions that are supported you mm -hmm. can't find anyone outside of this you know of this of this key so the only place that i used to get any support from i was cut cut it off from like those two years ago uh i still even before i, I was never a, you know a, their favorite so sometimes i did get money sometimes i didn't get money it also depended uh, how, how much they have, what was happening around, who needed it, you know, from the people, uh, people like who were maybe better connected to even the, the previous ones. Uh, so unfortunately, but in this situation, fortunately, because I was always, you know, dependent on, my, on myself. So uh, if, if, if we're talking, of course, like pre-pandemic times, uh, I was still able to do what I was supposed to do what I was doing uh, because I like my, my whole like way of doing it doesn't necessarily involve grants but I had to mention that throughout the, the whole time I was doing it it was always uh, I, I had this lack of maybe not not being supported by like the the, the bigger institutions or like the grants but always uh, the clubs that I was working with they were the right people and they were like uh, supporting what I was doing, you know, inter uh, also financially, but also like with the whole organization and like I wasn't alone in this. So, and especially the the, the club uh, that I, yeah, music music wise, uh, I run it at the moment where, where you've played, Club Re. Uh, they, they have to be mentioned because they, before I was there for like, actually now for 20 years, they, they, they are the place doing like alternative music in Krakow. Which is totally not obvious. It's maybe the sometimes it was the only place. Maybe two other places were doing it. They were changing, but this place was always like dedicated. And even when I was, you know, homeless, I must. I mean, I I I didn't have my other place that I was running. I was always able to come to them to, you know, the the Grzesiu, the guy who was responsible for the music there before me, uh, to Jerzy, who was who, like the owners of the place as well. Uh, and I was able to promote my shows uh, in Re as well, even even like before I, I took over and I uh, I'm running it now. And uh, that now now we had the pandemic, but with this with this support and connection, I'm I'm already able to tell that we're gonna keep going, and you know they're gonna be supporting it, which is pretty great because you know in those in those situations. When you're on your own, uh, I've seen a lot of people like starting to do their thing. Sometimes having like amazing ideas, but they didn't find the, you know those those situations. Mm -hmm. With me, it was like that for a long time, but I was like 
pursuing what I was, you know, looking for. I was, yeah, I sometimes it was, uh, I wasn't doing that great, uh, but I still had it in mind. So, and in time I found like different, 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 uh, different situations uh, with, with, yeah, with my festival, especially. This was support from like many venues in Krakow. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, most of them don't exist anymore. That, that's the way how it works here. You know, it changes mm -hmm. a lot. Like yes. today is, is quite usual in this in this respect. But like, uh, uh, but also like the play the, those my places where I was responsible for the concerts, and now 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 the place that I I can really say, it's hard to speak now because you know we had like the year off basically. Sure, <laughs> yeah. the year off. But like before, 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 before it it happened, I had this, maybe not for the first time, but for the the first time to to this this the scale of, the, of of a feeling that I'm really building like a music club that's you know that's running that's people acknowledge it as this place and you know they they take notice they like you know the bands as well. The, the whole situation is, is, is stable on the site that I don't have to, you know, convince the owners for the fucking hundredth time. Uh, can I swear? That's fine. Totally okay. good. Totally so good. Uh, for the hundredth time that we need to, you know, bring this band or that band or they, you know, usually, actually, usually maybe it's the Polish mentality. Usually it wasn't even like convincing them that much, but, you know, uh, after like doing fear for of, or 10th show that didn't work that well they had to put in some money like you know it wasn't they didn't they weren't seeing it as like great pr or something like that mm -hmm. uh, then you could see this in their faces or like you know <laughs> in the conversation that something wasn't right so mm -hmm. i really enjoy people that know the direction that we're trying to go uh, the direction that we're that we're heading you know yeah and this makes things much easier and then you have effects and we really like before the pandemic really uh, were seeing the effects so we had like people were coming to the shows it's not a huge venue but you know like we had some amazing bands that as well but also some some bands that weren't that known in poland but people were trusting us and also coming to those shows so really you know uh, in the, in those terms i i i, I know I, I i a little bit went off the political situation uh -huh. but in a sense, it's it's uh, maybe now coming back to it. It's also part of the part, uh, because like with peace, I agreed with everything that uh, that the guy said. And like in Krakow, it's also not not an easy situation. But uh, like uh, like my my experience is that for like alternative culture, it was never a great country. You know, it was it was never easy. I, 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 I'm pretty sure that the guys will, will agree with me. With, with, like, with peace, it's like they're on purpose trying to kill <laughs> uh, like anything that's you know, a little bit off, off normal, a little bit different. So it, it makes it even more difficult. But like before that, it was always, you know, even if the, like the, uh, crack, uh, let's get to Krakow and then I'm going to finish because I know I, I talk too much in, in, in this, in the, 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 the podcast, like, like formula. Uh, but like with Krakow, I'm not a fan of Krakow. And I love Krakow. I, I'm from Krakow. But in terms of like people, you know, running the city and like the situation, those situations in Krakow, uh, actually people, the, the, the city is, investing in culture you, you you can't say that it's not but they only invest in in like something slightly uh, opt, not obvious when they when they see it as their pr in a sense mm -hmm. which you know which 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 pushes in uh, the situation into into an absurd so like even the the best guys but that that are pushed yeah uh, I, I, I don't want to speak too, too long about it, but but you know d different like promotional situations, but also like the, the 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 events that were known for finding like the best places that suited the concert the best are for example pushed into doing uh, concerts in the city city venues, and you can see that it change it's it changes the the whole vibe vibe of an amazing thing that they. Uh, are still do you know are doing but like 
uh, you know, it's uh, it doesn't work as well as it as it used to. But mm -hmm. I, I also understand that like the the situation isn't easy and. Uh, it's it, it, it's always a little bit about like the politics and like they gotta get something out of it, but like I think in in Krakow like this PR ish and like this pressure to sell it in a sense uh, in in this like you know widely touristic city uh, it's 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 overwhelming so. Yeah, I'm gonna I, stop. I, I know I I went off. But... No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but you said you said something interesting that I want to like uh, follow up on with everybody, which is that you said that Poland in general was never an easy place or a good place to be pursuing alternative culture, and that now the only difference is that the government is actually actively trying to kill it. But even before it wasn't a good place to be doing this type of work. And this is interesting to me because um, I've been touring in Europe for over 10 years now. Obviously I took the last year off, unfortunately, but, um, but my first European tours were 2010, 2011. And um, I, I think that in, I've probably been to, I mean, I don't, it's more than 20 countries, you know, over there playing. And I think the audiences in Poland are the best in Europe. Yeah, yeah. But that, best I, in Europe. This may be the, you know, this may be the cause because like the... <laughs> well, that's what I was going to ask. Like, uh, this is the only circumstance why it happens. Right, you know? right. Yeah. Like good people, but uh, I mean, the good people Absolutely. can be the shows. But, yeah. No, because I mean, seriously, it's like palpable. I mean... In general, like in general, this is something I talk about a lot on the podcast, but like in general, when you're in the major markets like London and Berlin and whatever, um, <clears throat> people are sort of bored Yeah, because, yeah. because they course. have so every night it's like, oh, every night it's like one of tricks point never and Laurel Halo and like that, they're just like constantly yeah. have so much, you know, and it's the same in New York City. Like, so I completely understand so that you get this you get this kind of audience base that's almost like a little bit they're like a little bored with their own um abundance you know what i mean and then when you get to the east where some of these cultural presentations you know aren't taken for granted because they weren't always as present as they are now the the uh the the whole dynamic of the presentation and the show and everything about it changes you know what i mean but but in my experience by far the audience vibe in um poland and especially for interestingly especially for confrontational aesthetics like difficult aesthetics is it's just like the the level of energy in the audience is so high and it's such a standout um so then it was so then it's interesting for me to learn that you feel it was never a good place to be doing this type of work. And I was going to ask you what you just said was like, is there some relationship between <laughs> that quality of audience ship and, and it being a challenging place to do this type of work at all? Mm, it's, it's, it's super funny, I think, because we always had a really unique artist and really unique situ culture situations like during last, let's say 70 years, like after Second World War. Um, and like, of course, like I can mention like a lot of names and from musical side is like from Penderecki and Gorecki and Lutosławski and you know, like the, the titans of, uh, of, uh, of uh, modern contemporary music. And like the same thing with uh, like movie and uh, you know some new disciplinary art. There were like many many great artists in Poland, always trying to experiment to push the boundaries. But very often they they were like till even now many of that kind of artists for players they get the appreciation outside of Poland and they going back as the people who you know, reached something outside and they're going back and then more official institutions and like people who, 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 who have a like more like a political power, uh, then they eventually ad admires them. Mm, 
but from the audience side, it is always, it is the thing that I was thinking a lot, why, why it is like this, because uh, I heard that a lot from different artists, like how they, like how Polish audience is open to especially hard, like a confrontational, radical, uh, new things. And mm, like the thing that I like to think is this a mix of a few things like mentality that Poland, I think it's hard to say that Poland is like Central Europe or more like a, uh, East Europe or West Europe. We are in this like very specific place and mix of a different kind of mentalities that is hard to say mm -hmm. uh, in what kind of mentality, mentality we are. And, but we have that kind of emotional, like I think that people uh, here treat kind of uh, radical, like new art in an emotional way. They, they, they feel, feel connected in more in an emotional way than an intellectual, aesthetical way, mm -hmm. which, which is great, like mm -hmm. very natural uh, and through the intuition more. And, and mm, mix that kind of thing with that what Sipian said that it was never like, there was never a, a good, like a really good time for the avant-garde or alternative in Poland. Um, so the people are not used to see a lot of that kind of things. Um, and they treating it more special because it's, it's not so available and it's, it's not so like supported. So that I think that gives that kind of mix that like, I'm, after all these years, I still amazed. Uh, of course, we'll see what, what will, things will look this year, but till like 2019, like I was, every year I was amazed how people react to some artists. And I think that kind of intuition with like eager to see something new is, really like it's it's really something different and like going and seeing the festivals and gigs all over Europe I can say that probably it is true like I like it's not like you know like some compliment from mm -hmm. the for it's it's like there is this kind of it's hard to tell hard to put the fingers on finger on what exactly you know provides that but there is that kind of energy mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I want to I want to ask you a little bit more about what you just said. And I want to ask all of you about this, because um, a couple a couple things. One, it was interesting to hear you say that when it comes to this performance art and performance with this kind of more confrontational, harder type of aesthetic that that the audiences there in Poland uh, have more of an emotional kind of attachment to it than, um, than like a cultural or intellectual attachment. Not that they don't also have that, but like the way that you use that to describe, uh, the relationship as emotional, you know, I had never thought that in my mind specifically, but now thinking about my experiences and hearing you say that, I'm, I'm like, yeah, that is it. It's like, it is, it's more like emotional. It's like a, an emotional kind of reaction to this like difficult aesthetic. And I'm, I'm, I've always wondered why that is one. And two, uh, something else that's interesting that what, about what you just said, right? Is you said that because people don't take the performance opportunities or the, you know, the opportunities to see these performances for granted because they don't happen that often, right? There's a greater appreciation for it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in the United States, the opposite thing is, is what we think of is true. You see what I mean? In, in the United States, if you think of like difficult aesthetics, free jazz, noise, weird electronic music, you know, whatever, uh, you think of New York, LA, Chicago, San Francisco, you know, to an extent, DC, Boston, Miami, but like you're thinking of the big cities that have more culture, therefore they have more opportunities to contact this type of marginal experimental music. So there's more appreciation for it. If you get outside of the major cities, I think the assumption is, and this is not always true because I've 
toured all over America. And I know that there are, you know, places where this is not true, but I think the assumption is when you get outside of the major cities, there's less culture, there's less of this type of stuff. So there's less appreciation for it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, but what you're saying is the opposite, which I find interesting. So two questions. The first question is, why is there this emotional response to this type of of um, content. The only other place in the world where I've seen this is Japan. Now, I, the, I thought that you said that. Would say that, yeah. Now the Japanese, they're very like, they're very like calm about their emotions, but they do. There is this more visceral kind of intuitive reaction to difficult aesthetics, where it's like it's like they just like it. It's not like conceptual or intellectual. It, they just like it. You know what I mean? Um, and th so that that's the only other place in the world where I've encountered that. So I'm curious, like, why you guys think that is. And then we can get to the other question that I talked about, about there being less of it, so people being more interested in it. But first, what is it about that? Like, why do people have this type of emotional attachment to that type of difficult aesthetic? A uh, too easy answer would be like the Polish nature <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and uh, like re re being rebellious and stuff, but it's no, it's too easy. But like, but, but maybe in a, like, if we would like get into that, maybe there, yeah, you, you, you can connect it a little bit to this. But, uh, but on the other hand side, I think there, uh, maybe Krzysztof will know even more about it. Uh, but that in Poland, uh, in a sense, there is a the, there is a tradition because like the the most uh, lively scene that we've ever had in like in like uh, music like contemporary music uh, was this punk scene uh, of the eight uh, of the eighties, which was okay. like in terms of what people were listening to under the communism, you know. Like that when those ba 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 bands came and they started playing this and like all the, all the other even like uh, uh, rock and roll bands were also involved by this. Uh, I think this uh, th this also may be maybe the factor because like really this what happened in those strange time when uh, times when where when like. Uh, from the historical perspective, like communism was falling down, and like this whole punk movement and stories that were happening around it, also like rock and roll in this proper sense of the word, but like especially especially uh, punk uh, was happening and how many people were uh, involved in that, and and uh, the funny. The, the funny but in, in what we're talking about I think important fact uh, how much it's influential even now with like with, with, with even with, with with the people those people that I know that are interested in, in culture in like just slightly older than me uh, and still following their ideals you know like looking around uh, they all been there they all started <laughs> at those rock uh, uh, punk concerts in the in the 80s which mm. was uh, like uh, now it comes back where in the movies and like doc even documentary movies made about it but uh, the role of it at this end of the communist and this whole, like but, but in the whole of like the polish culture uh, i had this feeling that in the in the 90s it was like i not talked about as much as, as it as it should have been. Uh, I'm not sure why. M maybe it was just the simple fact that people were trying to, you know, grow out of it, like slightly growing out of their teenage or like early twenties, and then you know building the capitalism <laughs> or something. Mm -hmm. But like, and then in this most like funny and like practical way, like uh denying it a little bit but now i think it gets more appreciation but still not enough and maybe it's you know both like a little bit of the like the 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 character of the of the that's not an english word the uh 
like the spirit of the nation the like you know but the, mm -hmm. the spirit, which which is also has got a really interesting history but it's 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 it's, it's like a longer story but la, and maybe this this tradition you know on the on the practical way on the on the on the way that this experience like change the even 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 people in the next generations like the the influence influence it had but it's just just a guess you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well wait a minute uh, i want to hear from bukash and um christoph about this as well but what for everybody who's listening what's the most important iconic polish punk band from the 80s to listen to from us to them or from them yeah to you're us? gonna you're gonna tell us the most important polish punk band from the 80s so that the people who listen to this show can go check it out <laughs> there are too many but like my, my first but, but, but and i i like i like it because i i actually share it with like the the rock and roll bands or like yeah the the good alternative bands that i bring here and i've heard heard it a lot before i said it but like a lot of the the people that i was talking to came here they already knew it so i have to say shikera of course yes. yeah yes. of yeah. course <laughs> which is amazing <laughs> also, it was funny for me to find like people you know from all over the world like talking to me first about this and asking me if i know it and like you know or or like asking me where they could buy an original Ah. Uh, you know. <laughs> how do you spell I, by, it by, by chance i by chance i directed them to the only fa only fucking yeah only fucking uh, uh shop uh, by then on the only only vinyl shop in krakow uh and they found it there like the original print of shikera which was, oh, how do you spell shikera shikera it translates into a hatchet ah, <laughs> ah. Uh, and you spell it uh, uh, that spelling s uh, e k uh, i e r a right all right cool i'm gonna check it out think, um so okay all right so i'm gonna pick this back up so um bukash and um christoph so what Cyprian said was too long of a story to get into is, is he said that he thinks in addition to it being the legacy of this like punk uh, history in, you know, Poland from the 80s and whatnot, that um, that uh, there was also something about like the national spirit. Can can somebody say something about that so that I like understand what you're talking about? Uh, like uh no, Vukash. Go ahead. Go ahead, Vukash. Okay, uh, I'm much more involved in uh, visual scene or in uh, you know providing the art gallery. It's uh, it's different than uh, providing a musical venue. And uh, but I think that uh, that what uh, Cyprian said it's much more uh, involved also in political situation because alternative art, alternative culture was always in opposite to the, uh, you know, uh, political situation. It's always like, uh, opportunity to make something different, to make some, uh, you know, to, to, um, ex experience anything, uh, both, uh, in opposite to the situation the, in the country. So it, uh, it was uh, a lot of energy there in this alternative stand or visual or, or music stand, uh, etc. It's always a, a huge, a huge emotional uh, and, and uh, you know, some, some kind of fighting, fighting with the reality uh, in, the, in the 80s and, 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 uh, and before. So I think it was uh, uh, this those experience uh, much more uh, involve people to 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 make alternative culture as a, as their voice and and maybe uh, we are uh, still uh, remember these times and and we still trying to to make uh, art. Like uh, opposite for the for the politic and, and situation like that. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but the truth is like the uh, there's this joke that the um, in Poland it's much easier to gather up because of being against something, yeah, than to organize <laughs> things because you actually have the same value, values, yeah, yeah. something like this. And that's you know that's that's mainly true because of our history of a lot of uprising of a lot of like you know. Uh, there was a moment when there was no Poland on the map because that was stretched between countries around um, who were occupying the certain parts of Poland. And so, so this topic uh, of being against like the main, like, like, like a oppressor government, usually it was the same. So being against the propaganda of it, it was, uh, it was uh, always, uh, you know, like, Mm, like a lot of of the Polish literature and like like a lot of Polish Polish, Polish art is against something. It's like trying to save some independence, and mm, so 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 like this punk movement in the eighties was uh, like a voice of a whole generation who was sick of the communism. So that's why that also had such a strong impact. Um, but. I want to like I want to get back to your um, Sam. You were talking about Japan, mm. and it's actually I think you can draw a lines between the, the these two countries and like and saying that actually the Polish and Japanese culture are pretty well connected. Not only Chopin, but uh, there are a lot of like artists that, uh, especially from Poland, like Polish artists who are who who are really admire. Uh, were really admired in Japan is still are. And I think it is like, because of culture of both, both countries, uh, act of performing or doing art that is like outside of the norms is a thing that is like a little like tougher, more taboo. And because Poland is such a like, our kind of culture is so strongly put on the like uh, faith of Catholic Church, a kind of like patriotic, but truly more like a nationalistic way of thinking about the country and the culture mm-hmm. that gave the feeling that if you're doing something different, then you are really like doing the effort. You are really speaking and I think that might be a case why in Poland people get emotional and like in Japan also, it's like, it's, it's, it means something if you're doing that kind of culture, it really mm-hmm. means something. It's mm-hmm. against many things, it's not easy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this is a, this, it's not like an intellectual or aesthetical choice that I want to do something different. It's, it's 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 like decision that you will be fighting with many things to get the things done. So if you get the things done and the people watching this and they are involved, they you know they are more fu- fulfilled in that than normally. Mm-hmm. It, it has a bigger meaning, I think. So so you're saying there's this like built-in appreciation for people who are doing this type of work sort of against the odds. Yeah, it's of course a small kind of audience, like a smaller, uh-huh. but um, people realize how, you know, how not easy to is to doing that. So, 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 so because of that, it's that kind of connections, that kind of connection, the thing is, is it's not obvious that somebody would do that kind of thing. And the funny thing in Poland, and like like Lukas said about Cieszyn, where when his gallery was like, firstly, um, funny thing that in Poland the good thing is there are many local scenes and small venues and small institutions, small galleries that people are doing the the, the things, um, and like a same mechanism that they are they know that nobody will go to their city to do something. So they're doing something. And the audience, small, of course, audience, but admires that, that somebody like did something. Like that, mm-hmm. that if they will not gather, if they will not organize, if they will not go to a certain event, yeah. there will be nothing. So they need yeah. to do this. Mm. And 
And, and again, as we are going back to this feeling that if something is not available, is not provided, you are looking on the things differently. Mm -hmm. Yes, heard. Um, well, it's amazing to perform in Poland, I'll tell you that. Uh, so I have a pivot and a different follow-up question that's related to some of what's come up uh, so far. Uh, there's been the political situation in Poland has um, come up repeatedly. And I'm wondering, this is something that I'm always interested in when I talk to people from other places, because um, this is a big issue here in New York City and I think in America in general. Um, does the political situation there translate down into conflicts with the police in terms of running venues and doing concerts and having shows and stuff like, well, is it is it a common experience that the police? I know that Christoph, the police came when you set off all those fire alarms, you know, or those car alarms. But um, but like in general, is it a common experience for the police to come because there's too many people or because it's too loud or like? Do you feel like you're in this kind of struggle with the police to present culture there or? Or is that not so much of an issue for you? Because it's different in different places, and I, I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. you can you can probably I don't say have a lot in the experience with Krakow uh, situation. The, uh, it, it, it's definitely an issue, but like actually in in Poland, speaking like pre-COVID, but also during COVID, because of course there was less of the shows to you know to 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 ride by the police during covid uh but uh, i mean the the, the the you know the police in, in poland in general weren't uh, viewed uh, in a in a in a in a great light from the times of the communism mm -hmm. <laughs> and there was a process of like 20 something years of building uh this connection between like with, they were called Milizia before the end of the, and then they changed the name for police, Polizia. Uh, and they were building some uh, connection with the people. And I never, I never liked police too much, but even at some point, even I wasn't re reacting too badly to them or like, you know, uh, people, I didn't have that much trouble with them. Some, Sometimes I did, but not 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 that much. Uh, uh, but now with what's happening, uh, I maybe should start with what's happening. So they, my feeling is that I, I've heard stories from friends, of course, that it gotten worse during uh, in those times. Uh, but in general, my feeling is that they pretty much for. They're, they're happy if you're doing an alternative concert again against you uh, being protesting their politics exactly on the streets and showing it on the signs and stuff and stuff and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like the police actually last two years, especially they turned actually, they actually turned brutal towards towards people re regularly on the street. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that I don't have to like translate it to you because I know what the situation is in the United States and probably you can still can't compare the it's also a different situation right mm -hmm. but especially those political events uh, focused on like you know women uh, women's rights human rights uh, but they that they feel that can harm them harm them politically and are actually turning like most of the society uh, against them, uh, they actually go in and uh, they can be really brutal. Uh, uh, and yeah, and now coming back to what I was saying, in those two years, they totally, as the police, but also the, those people running the police, uh, they lost everything they gained like in those 20 something years after the mm -hmm. communism. Now like young people, hate them as much as they hated them in the late 80s, I guess. This is my, this is my feeling. But uh, I, if you're asking me about like canceling events, 
I even like judging the experience of my of my friends of what I've heard uh, that still wasn't that much of a of a thing even be, uh, like before COVID where when it was happening uh, of course it was a little bit more difficult because you know they 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 gradually are changing uh even the guys who who, who run the, the the regular policemen into assholes so there were maybe more trouble that they were like let's say like seven years ago but this wasn't like the case of that uh doing like a regular rock rock show, uh, rock concert you would like you know plan what you're gonna do if the police is gonna show up and not not like in the because it was a thing in the 80s for example Definitely, uh, mm. this was happening because, like the the com especially the communism government did, uh, didn't know what to what uh, what to think about like uh, punk concerts, punk music. So sometimes they try to you know uh, just beat beat people for them not to not to go into go to those shows. But like in terms of 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 like regular reg, uh, regular stories uh, not not as much stories of people coming like police coming and like closing down the venues mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or like discouraging you to do things I had like I used to run a venue which was really loud during the night so I had a lot of trouble with the neighbors calling the police and stuff like that and stuff like, like that yeah. uh, Still, and I had some trouble even like myself, uh, but still I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, but it was like seven years, eight years ago. Uh, so a different government, different times, but still I wouldn't judge it as like uh, po police overacting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was, I, and I really had some, had some trouble with it. So, uh, so yeah, this is, this is what I what I yeah what, what I can what I can what I can what, what I can say about it, but it's gotta be said that uh, they really fucked up all the all the all, you know all the connection with the people with what, what they're doing in this political context context mm -hmm. and especially especially squ uh, squashing down those those political rallies and events mm -hmm. and like marches. Yeah, yeah, I, I've been reading about some of that. Yeah, um, yeah. that is unfortunate. Um, word. Well, uh, I have another question, but Christopher Mukash, do you have anything to add to that before I? Because I, I have another question for y'all. But but has Cyprian got it, or is there something to chime in on? Yeah, I totally agree with, with Cyprian. Like the the the, the situation, like there is no like. I don't feel the threat from the police side doing the events as long as I'm not doing some uh, crazy Glora, uh, Glora gigs, which sometimes I do. <laughs> but, uh, but 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 like if it's a venue, it's like if uh, people knows that something is going that kind of area, like there is like as far as uh, there is no big loud you know noises and like things like this, like. It's, 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 it's pretty, yeah, no, not overreacting as Sipian said. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. It's something that I notice between, you know, playing and organizing shows in New York and traveling in America versus traveling in other parts of the world. I would say that for the most part, you know, like, like in, 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 let's just say in New York, in New York, places are always getting shut down for like all kinds of reasons you know because they were too crowded because somebody under the age of 21 was able to buy a drink because they found out somebody was doing drugs because it's too loud because you know just like there's all kinds of reasons where like as venue operators and as people who are accustomed to throwing and playing shows like police involvement is something that it's very very common for people to be worried about Unless, you know, you play folk music or something. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah, I think yeah. it's not so much of an issue if you play some really polite, you know, music for small groups of people or something like this. But anything that has the potential to get 
yeah, wild I mean, up, you know, it's like it's like very common. And like, you know, I've toured all over the United States many times and like in every city, everybody's kind of always worried about this, you know. And I just notice when I'm abroad playing in other countries and stuff, it just seems like the police are less motivated to interfere with um, cultural programming, e even in countries where they have a very right wing agenda like. It, it just seems like it's not as much of a thing that they're going to come and be like, there's I mean, too many in people Krakow, in here. Yeah, in, I mean, in Krakow, like the curfew is the issue, especially with the festival when I'm doing like the, the shows outside with a bigger PA and stuff. Uh, I have to like uh, get all the uh, papers to do it and then still they try to like shut it down after after 11, which is an hour when you get, the, if anybody complains, then they're gonna come and then they're gonna come the second time and uh, finish the finish the concert. Mm -hmm. But we are like used to it. So we, we managed to, you know, and, and there is no like, you know, they're, they're never to, 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 they're never brutal or anything. They're just, mm -hmm. you know, they're just come and say that you gotta finish. And then you say that another 15 minutes and then they come again. And you gotta finish, but this is like, but no, but the curfew is, is an issue, especially in Krakow, because they protect this touristic, you know, touristic monopole of the city. So, like, if the city throws an event that doesn't let the people in the spectrum of like five kilometers sleep till mm -hmm. like back in three three a.m., it's cool. Mm -hmm. But when you do a show and you go like five minutes after eleven outside, or because luckily in the venue that I'm running, it's like uh, you've seen it. It's a bunker, so yeah. <laughs> basically a bunker and not that many neighbors. So like, right. and the, the neighbors are also friends. So like, yeah, the same with my venue. So um, yeah, we, we don't have trouble there, but like uh, the, the curfew is the yeah. It, this is the this was always my issue, like for like for, for years and years doing. Mm -hmm. All right, word. Well, my next question, uh, and, and one of my last questions is, what are y'all working on and what's coming up? And what are you excited about um, that you're, you know, doing? Um, Christoph? Uh, I'm actually like, I'm in the moment when I'm trying to like organize everything that I'm doing because like, for example, I didn't count that the gigs will go back so fast and they're coming yeah. back and, and like coming back in, in Poland and like in whole like, like Europe. So that's one thing like working on the, on the, on the like for example, uh, a European tour of Jerusalem in my heart, the, the artist from, from Montreal. So that, so, so like a bunch of artists that I'm working with now, we get this boost that we can again, try to planning for things, releasing the albums, like, you know, doing the things. Mm -hmm. um, that's a, that, 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 that's that's one thing, and um, it's, it's of course, like from my point of view, it's like we will see what will happen during autumn and winter because I'm still like not very like sure that there that we finished we are finished with the pandemic like mm -hmm. gently. Another thing uh, is I'm working as a music supervisor on the soundtracks for movies and for video games. And that's a kind of new experience for me. Like I'm doing it more than a year now, like, like really like uh, constantly more or less every day. And like, um, but I guess like apart from all the work that I'm doing, I'm the most excited that I can but maybe soon I can see some people from the, uh, you know, all over the world that I know that finally we can, you know, we can like, even like if they will not, you know, like even if, if I will miss their show on festival or anything, I can just, you know, see the people faces like and, and, and talk. And that's for me is like the most like excited because all my work is about relations. So I would love to have getting back their relations to normal to see the people. Um. Yeah, no, I, I feel you 100%. My daughter is 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 pursuing me. Violet, what are you, what, what's going on? I'm recording a podcast. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm 15 minutes late. Um, do you know where my computer is? Your computer is, it was right <laughs> in there. Sorry, guys. Um, use, you could use the computer in my backpack. 
Isn't that it right there on the pink on the pink chair under the pillow? That's an iPad. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a computer in my black backpack. Okay. Okay. I will. I'm gonna have to. I don't know if I'm gonna edit it out or not. Maybe it's just a moment of realness. Uh, anyways, my daughter got home from school. Here she is. That's Violet. Uh, <laughs> all right. That's uh, uh, Christoph. That sounds sick. Uh, Wukash, what's 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 coming up for the gallery? Uh, the gallery, it's a uh, quite interesting uh, uh, situation for me because with the pandemic, we are stops uh, making uh, exhibitions in our you know place. Uh, last year, we 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 made uh, you know two shows only, but we made an exhibition outside the gallery uh, with our artists and managed it, this uh, exhibition of curating and etc. And I'm also uh, a visual artist and also a musician. So I'm involved in many projects uh, what I'm doing by myself. So I'm trying to, you know, program something <laughs> for the uh, next month, but it's, uh, for me, it's very, uh, very difficult. And it's, uh, we are trying to believe that we, we can do this, uh, this, uh, this uh, you know, Mm, these shows, these exhibitions, these concerts in the uh, few few months to, till the end of the year. So uh, I don't know. It's very hard. We have some uh, some plans and some exhibitions also uh, in Warsaw, also in out, outside the gallery because we want to uh, not only uh, you know um, specifically uh, uh, making a. a, a uh, shows in the Katowice, but also uh, outside. So it's uh, it's, it's our, you know, uh, stuff to to, uh, and uh, at uh, next year we will have uh, twenty years, twenty years of the gallery. So really? we will celebrate that twenty years. I don't know how. Maybe we make some exhibition. <laughs> we That's plan a concert at the 18, uh, but the pandemic uh, stops every plans for it. So we have 18 and nothing to do with it because we cannot do anything. So when we have 20, so we try to do something big if we can. <laughs> next, year, next year is the band I play in Z's 20 year anniversary. Oh, so, so we, we have make come, together something. Yeah. yeah, we have to come to Katowice. And yeah, it will be great. I think it's a great idea. Because in Katowice, uh, we opened have for Have you Burzko. been in Katowice? Yeah, twice. Oh, we great. played Off Festival twice, and we opened great. for Burzbo. And then I also, uh, when we played the main, um, that was like Katowice Club in the spring, but when we played the main, um, excuse me, Off Festival Club in the spring, but when we played the main one in August, we played uh, right after Dinosaur Junior. Yeah, that was a great show. <laughs> that was good. So we'll have to celebrate our 20 year anniversaries together. Um, sick. That's amazing. Congratulations on that. It's incredible. Um, Cyprian, what's good? What's coming up, man? Uh, I'm glad to hear that we all have trouble coming back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, no, I my, my usual stuff. I'm glad uh, that I I. I Okay, I had my times in the woods and stuff and thinking about stories, but I but I kept focus as much as I could. So yeah, I'm gonna from like from September, I'm gonna have like regular shows in the uh, in, in Club Re. And also my, my like, I was fortunate because uh, the pandemic was moving on Poland like slower than it was in Italy or like in Western Europe. So I managed to do like the online, this 10th online edition uh, last, uh, like uh, before the summer and just uh, after the summer. And I was even able to let, uh, the, because there were like three Canadian musicians and three Polish bands that I really, my, my favorite ones that I brought especially to play live. And I recorded them from the, from the club. So I was actually able to let some people in from the from the list and that, that when they con, uh, confirmed that they're not sick and stuff and stuff and stuff Amazing. so i did it uh, i was doing it till end of the se last september uh 
which was really lucky because I, if I wouldn't be doing anything for like a year <laughs> mm-hmm. plus, then I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how, how I, I would handle it. Uh, yeah, when I when I rebooked like some bands that I, I had already booked for 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 the club for the third time, I turned philosophic and I went and I, I've spent like like I just came back like five four days ago to get vaccinated. <clears throat> uh so i so yeah so, so so but still some of them are uh, are now booked for september and on uh like the first show that i'm gonna do in re is gonna be uh, it's actually gonna be uh josef van wiesen so mm-hmm. the the guy the, the the vampire guy so we're yeah. all gonna turn up uh, show up as the uh, vampires you know and like it's all gonna be cool from from there uh, and also because I missed my uh, my with the third wave of coronavirus, I missed my Grinzu dates this year, like May and May June. Uh, I'm gonna do like at least three bigger bigger concerts uh, on the verge of uh, October and uh, November. Uh, I've got like I already have got three, so there may, may be more. So I'm gonna promote like bigger shows, maybe like two or three shows in the in the the w- one weekend. Uh, one of the bands playing is is gonna be King Khan, so also one of my favorites, uh, and the Shrines. Uh, and I'm gonna fit him in. I mean, I tried to fit him in into this like 100. So you've seen it, Klopre. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I go with 10 people on stage, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, okay. and and actually, but but I'm happy, and I've got some like two or three shows till the end of the year per month, so it's already it's already good. And like the bands that I really love, I actually lately like coming back to Krakow after my philosophical uh, mood, I also started talking to like uh, to for example to two bands that recorded like my favorite uh, records of 2020. To play in Krakow in uh, in the 2022, I gotta think about you know. And now I'm, <laughs> I'm like uh, gotta change the gotta change the dates in my head because like one year is. Uh, so yeah, it, for for 2022, so I'm really happy about this as well. Uh, and yeah, and and the the I'm gonna finish with like that with with my friends with with, with the guys that I tried to build anything that you could call a scene or like a club, uh, like with the bands that I really like Polish bands that I really like. They're also in our phase, so they're slightly don't know what's gonna be happening. But I've already been with contact with, uh, in contact with them, so I'm planning some some uh, of my favorite Polish bands concerts as well. So. Uh, ho- and hopefully it's 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 not gonna it's not gonna come back. So so then then I uh, I just hope you know people are gonna come back to to shows, right? <laughs> people are gonna come back in New York. We're like just reopening, and you like uh, my, my club. We renovated and now have a backyard with a sound system, and we're doing like DJ programs in the backyard. Uh, and man, people are out man they're they're coming uh, out everybody's vaccinated the masks are coming off it's like crazy it feels crazy i've it seen feels... some, I've, I've seen some some photos yeah from from the states but also from australia and yeah yeah as a <laughs> club <laughs> owner i feel like I'm yeah like really worried uh, and freaked out about it you know let's hope so you know even even though like i always say this like Krakow ain't New York, if you know what I mean. Like... <laughs> Good, true, true. Fair enough. But great town, one of my favorite, one of my favorite towns. Yeah, um, it's a great, it's a great town. But in terms of like you know, attendances at rock and roll, right, you know, right. the whole fair like, sorry, ain't New York. But like... <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, word. Well, folks, um, amazing to have you guys on. Thank you so much for coming on Place of Assembly. It's really great to reconnect with the two of you and to meet you in, you know, kind of in person, uh, Lukasz for the uh, for the first time. Uh, Poland, one of my favorites. Can't wait to get back there. Uh, trying to get there in October. We'll see. But um, but anyways, it's been cool to talk to you guys. And thank you guys for coming on the show. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank it was fun. 
All right. I hope to see you soon in Krakow, you know, and and Katowice and uh, Tri City. I. Tri City. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna happen. I'm coming. Uh -huh. I'm coming. Later, guys. A tendency to building castles in the air. <laughs>